All right. Had an interesting day at the Pike County VA. They did my hearing test. And uh, right ear, still weak, a lot better than what it was uh, when I first got diagnosed with tinnitus. Not that far after I got removed from the military due to all the loud explosions and shit I was around and being in the combat zone and all that good stuff. Left ear, here is fine. The ringing is there, but they did say that everything looks good. Just keep doing what I'm doing. The ring is just a side. And all that else is just the net being compressed because of what's going on. And like I said, I'm going to show a picture what's going on. You probably can see it with this muscle up in here, the infospinase and all this. These muscles will spasm for a while. And that caused a lot of tension on the neck. And depending on how you sleep, how you have your neck laid at night, how often you round your shoulders for and stuff, they'll put tension on your trapezius muscle that runs to the back of your occipital bone right through here. Right? These muscles attach here. You got nerves and stuff that come from your, your here and here. And you got a tube that goes from your ear down your neck. When these nerves, especially the uh, sternal coil mastroid, the, 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 the SC, M muscle, this muscle here, because I can't really pronounce that motherfucker, that attached to your cavicular bone here. When that, when, well, your, your collarbone, but the cavicular head, you know, of the pet. But anyway, when that muscle gets tight and these muscles get tight, it can cause compression on a nerve in your ear. And that can lead to ringing, aka tinnitus. Same on both sides. So the ear look good. The ring is going to be there for a while. Keep working the neck, keep stretching the muscles, doing good stuff, watching how you sleep, your posture, that's going to help. And uh, keep working on these muscles, get them loose and all that stuff, that's going to help. Other than that, everything checked out. But this video here, uh, I, I'm responding to a uh, watcher, a, a subscriber now, and uh, they was having issues losing weight. I went to the gym today, had a good time at the gym. I want to do full body, body side, just do upper body today, upper and back. I'll do legs tomorrow and uh, glutes and abs and cardio. Um, but while I was in the gym, I noticed people, when they're on a the treadmill, when they're doing certain movements, especially when it comes to cardio, they're leaving so much opportunities for, for weight loss on the table. And what I mean by that, when you're on the treadmill, you got a high incline, and you're trying to run them up with the incline, you're going to go for so long before you gas out. Then you're going to get tired, then you got to stop, catch your breath, and then try to do it again. Eventually, you're going to burn yourself out. Why not put it on a not so steep incline, bring it down a little bit, maybe a 5 to 7% incline, and walk. It's about the journey, the distance, not, not the... Not the burst of speed, because guess what? You're going to burn, if you're running, you might burn 10 calories in a minute. If you burn yourself out in 10 minutes to where you got to stop doing the cardio, you only burn maybe 100 to maybe 150 calories, depending on how big you is, right? And big people shouldn't be running. Whereas if you walk for that hour at, say, three or four miles an hour, you'll burn about 400 calories. It's about the distance it's the distance. Same with the elliptical. I see people in the elliptical. They moving the rods uh, help you overload the legs, right? It'll keep you going when you're tired. But you're supposed to have your hands on the bar so you can pedal all out, right? That causes you to move your legs without assistance from your hands, which means you're going to turn out more wattage, which means you're going to turn out more calories. You're going to burn more. When you have to grab the rods, yes, you're overloading the legs, but you're leaving so much on the table. Now, me personally, I like to not use the rods at all. I like to try to go on my own. And then when I just get too tired, then I grab the rod, try to push everything out. Then I get the long handles overload till I get some wind back and then go again. I see people constantly holding on to the rods. Yes, you're getting the upper body workout and all that as well. But you're still, you're not getting what you can get out of it. If you're going to do that, you're limiting yourself. Lower the resistance down to where you can pedal. If the resistance is too high, yes, you're going to push harder, but it's going to require you to use more of this, okay? Just an example. If you're trying to lose weight, first off, how lean are you? How big are you? How tall are you? That that all plays a factor into how much weight you should lose safely, okay? I'm at 164 pounds today. I'm trying to get to 160. And I'm just going to stay there, live there. When I want to put on more weight, bulk, no more than 170. 
If I decide to pursue powerlifting again once I'm all healed up, then I'll try to get up to about 175. But I don't want to get to 180 and go anything less than 160 for me at my height, which is right at six foot. I'm five foot 11 and three fourths. I'm six foot. But I'm already, in this picture right here, I'm already a pretty lean person. I'm, I'm sitting at somewhere between 10 and 13% body fat, okay? If I try to lose any more weight past 160, it's going to come at a, a substantial trade-off. If I wanted to be a bodybuilder and get on stage shredded, I can keep this weight and fill out my frame with more muscle. That will, over time, eat at the overall fat that's on my body, right? Because the, the fat got to be replaced with something. You start adding more muscle, you'll, you'll lean yourself out. You'll get shredded. You'll start to eat away at the fat reserves you have on your body. Except for the essential fat, which is like 5% that you need to survive, and men are like 10% of women that you just need to survive. Well, you can get away by 9% of women. But it'll be hell trying to get that lean with that type of muscle if I want to lose weight and not build muscle. Now, from here, I can, I got some fat. Now, I, not a lot. I got some fat, but I can fill my frame out with about five more pounds of muscle, and it'll keep me somewhere between 160 and 170. And I'll be nice. I'll be sitting there probably at the 10% body fat range. And I can live there and be happy. Still have energy, testosterone, all that good stuff. So it all depends on your height. The body knows how to survive better than you do. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. The body knows how to survive better than you do. i give you an example. If you don't eat, I, I use Cali muscle, for example. If all you eat is fruit all the time and you're not getting your protein in, okay? You're not getting your electrolytes, your chloride, your sodium, your potassium, your calcium, and your magnesiums, okay? Them all your electrolytes, the essentials. If you're not getting that with protein, protein, I'm not just talking about when you think of protein, think of, of protein that, you know, build muscle. That, that's one building block in muscle, but you need protein for that. But protein has other functions, skin, organs muscle function it just does a lot to help you survive okay and you're not getting up essential fats in your diet to where you can keep making hormones and stuff that way you get your omega-3s your omega-9 your omega-6s those are all essential body fats they each one of them does some a little bit different okay if you're not getting all of that in your diet and all you do is eat fruits all the time the body yes you might lose a lot of body fat but the body will start to take that muscle, right? You'll become uh, 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 catabolic, right? It'll take that muscle and start to break that down and then turn it into usable energy. And, and when it gets to that point, it's not good. So you need to have a healthy diet. If you're trying to lose 30 pounds of weight, here's how you do it. It's a very simple not too hard, not too sciencey, not none of that shit that can make you not want to do it. Here's how you do it. Walk. Get a bicycle, you can ride a bike. Try to get in some extra cardio throughout the week. All right. If you're doing two days of cardio, always program a leg day. Cardio requires a lot of leg work unless you're swimming and stuff, but still requires legs. So you don't want to have too many run days or walk days or a lot of cardio days that's going to really tax the legs you're trying to build nice legs okay but if you're not really worried about that you want to have tone lift you're not trying to squat a lot of weight you just want to look fit be be healthy walking will build some leg muscles don't think about the hamstrings the calves all the uh uh dorsi flexion and all that and the plantar flexion this right here works the calves so doing a lot of walking also strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings Walking up hills and stuff, you're talking more hamstrings, more glute. Because your ass muscle is the biggest muscle in your body. You utilize it, right? Walk, ride a bike. Like I say, when you move your legs, you are initiating your glute. Your glute initiates your legs. Do all that. Swim if, if you're too big, right? Swim. Do low-impact cardio for about five days a week. If cardio is boring to you, and you're trying to lose weight. I know this might sound kind of productive, but put on some more lean muscle tissue. Okay, but well what's going to happen, Shavar? You're going to start to build lean tissue. 
Lean tissue is more metabolically active, which means you'll burn more calories with activity and therefore you can eat foods and get full, right? Without worrying about going over your calorie maintenance by too many calories. The scale might not change initially because guess what? Muscle is more denser than fat. It just takes up a smaller area than fat. Therefore, it don't require that much calories to build lean tissue. So getting a three to 500 calorie surplus and staying there for a few weeks as you're training, I say program three to four training days of resistance training, uh, upper body days, do upper body work, lower body days, put your cardio with that. Do your legs first, warm up, and then do low impact cardio after that. Just to make sure your calories stand high. All right. Uh, do that. Right. Don't try to starve yourself because the body will hold on to that fat, especially when you try to starve yourself. It, 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 it'll, it'll lower your BMR, your, your, your basal metabolic rate, the way you metabolize food, the way you burn off food. It will lower that down, which means you're going to store more fat or hold on to more fat. It's going to make you more fatigued. The body knows how to manipulate things. So if you're trying to lose that 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 last stubborn amount of weight, you're going to have to either build a little bit more muscle tissue to offset that. Yes, you're going to probably keep the scale the same for a while. But over time, as you continue to build the lean tissue, the fat will go away. The weight will start to come down. Once you build the amount of muscle that you want, then you're able to do more cardio. And since you have more lean tissue, more active tissue, you'll burn more calories as you do the cardio. And therefore, you will continue to lose weight, especially if you stay at maintenance or slightly below in a calorie deficit once you get the muscles that you're trying to get. So you got to keep your proteins high, your healthy fats high, keep your carbohydrates low. Because the body will take the healthy fats you're eating and it will convert that to usable energy as well. You don't have to just have a lot of abundance of carbs to have energy. You know, the body takes carbohydrates and digests them for glycogen. That's the stores, right? Muscle stores, your liver stores, glycogen, and glucose for energy in the bloodstream and for your brain to use. So, build lean tissue, keep your proteins high, keep your healthy fats kind of high. Fats are dense in calories, so watch the amount of fats you're eating. Keep your carbs low and get your carbs from fruits and vegetables, right? Not candy and shit all the time. Because guess what? Eating a handful of gummy bears is like 300 calories right there. You're not going to get full. It's going to spike your goddamn sugar, your insulin, and you're going to want more food. Okay, we're gonna it's gonna it's gonna spike it's gonna it's gonna spike it um, your sugar, and then you got to produce more insulin, and then over time, when you have not enough insulin in your blood and too much sugar, guess what happens? You get diabetes because your pancreas is shut the fuck down, you get insulin resistance. So you have to watch all that stuff. Okay, uh, make sure you get enough sleep and hydration. A lot of people don't hydrate. You think you're hungry, but you're not. You're probably just thirsty. I give you an example. You ever had an appetite? You get a phone call, bad news or good news. Let's say you won a lottery. You're not thinking about fucking eating no fucking more. You ready to get your fucking money? You 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 were hungry. You were scratching off your lottery ticket. You you hit a hundred thousand dollars. Well, the hunger just left. It's all about the mind, and you can trick your body by filling up your stomach and your body with, with water. It will. Stop the ghrelin hormone, which is the hunger hormone, and replace with leptin because it's if your stomach's full, you're full. So you can't take in anything in your stomach no more. Hydration is key. Eating meals that is full in volume and, and low in calories. Volume means dense and voluminous, right? Like a bowl of popcorn, but low in calories. I like drinking diet soda because if I eat popcorn with soda, Guess what happens? The acid in the soda will expand your stomach. It'll make you feel full. Those are little tricks that you can do to lose that little stubborn 30 pounds of weight or any weight for that matter. So it's how you want to do it. Put on lean tissue to help output more calories from the lean tissue being active, metabolically more active. Uh, and keeping your proteins high, fast, high, carbs low and doing extra cardio or just if you're not really worried about trying to build muscle, Increase your cardio output or your activity output, all right? Same thing. Keep your protein high because you don't want to lose whatever little muscle you got. Uh, but you don't have to keep your fats that high at that point. You can kind of lower your fats down so it'll lower some calories away. And at the same time, you keep your carbs low. Keep them still low. Because like I say, carbohydrate, if you eat too many of them, will be stored, be, be stored as sugar in the stomach and, in, and, and, and over time as fat. So 
You have to manipulate that. But activity, sleep, hydration is the key to any healthy diet, any healthy weight loss. So I hope that this helped. If you have any more questions, leave it in the comment down below. I'll make a video about it. If you want more one-on-one -on -one style advice, email me at shavarmattenfitness at gmail.com. We can talk offline. I can give you some training tools to use and get you on your way to a healthier lifestyle. Remember, fitness is a lifestyle. It shouldn't be something you want to do temporarily. It won't be something you can do for the rest of your life. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm out, guys. Peace.